are doing a lot of work in the area of electric vehicles and their integration into the grid. Um, I look at uh, our first presentation and the discussion was about ultra-fine particulates. Uh, you know, I happen to be living within a mile of one of the major highways and uh, certainly, you know, if there's more electric cars, I would definitely be a happier customer. Uh, our connection to wireless is that we have applied wireless and wireless sensors and controllers into the modernization of the electric power grid and into enabling and helping connect electric vehicles into the grid. So I'll talk about the Smart Grid Energy Research Center. Um, I don't know if any of you here uh, drives electric car at all. Can you raise your hand? I want to have a very rough idea of one, two, three, four, right? So we're about I drive and Nissan Leaf. So for those of you who have to, those of us who have to drive from, uh, let's say West Los Angeles down here, uh, you know, and as I was driving down the highway today, the, the, the indicator was showing, uh, when I left home it said 110 miles. When I drove about 10 miles it said 70 miles. And I said, I'm not, good. I'm not getting back home. Well, it turns out there's a lot of these subtle nuances every time you introduce a new technology much like when we introduced wireless technology in the 90s. Now we're introducing smart grid technologies into the grid, we're introducing electric cars. There is going to be a process of learning. 15 years ago, we didn't, could never imagine that there, was, there could be something called an iPhone. Okay? So we can't imagine 10 years from now what an electric car will look like. The Nissan Leaf gives you theoretically 90 miles to the full charge and practically maybe 70 to 80 miles but there's another car called the Tesla Model S that gives you 380 miles to the full charge. The innovation is moving very, very fast. Nissan Leaf charges at a rate of 3.3 kilowatts per hour. The new Teslas can go up to 90 kilowatts per hour. They can charge 380 miles of range in about an hour. So innovation is going to change the electric transportation business and the research done by labs like mine to apply wireless and communications technology to be able to monitor the electric car, to be able to charge it in a smart fashion, to be able to look at what's happening on the grid, to be able to offer you a great price incentive at, at, at midnight when the price of energy falls to two cents per kilowatt hour on the wholesale, as opposed to in the afternoon when it might be 35 or 40 cents. These kind of smart technologies will gradually make their way into the power grid and into our lives, and that's the kind of work that I'm interested in doing. My research is funded by Department of Energy. I have a couple of grants. One grant is with the LA City Los Angeles Department of Water and Power to be able to create demonstrations for such technologies like electric vehicle integration into the grid to be able to offer programs like what I just talked about. And I'll talk about a very specific technology that we have actually developed. Another research project is called Demand Response in which the utility can send a signal to your refrigerator and ask it to increase its temperature by three degrees that by solving a massive crisis, even though it's only asking you to give up three degrees of Fahrenheit of, of, of cooling, what it does is if this happens to all the refrigerators across a region, it does help the grid operator in a very big way. That's another area of research that I'm doing. I also have a grant from the California Energy Commission, and by the way, these are all part of the Smart Grid Energy Research Center, uh, and, 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 and the grant from CEC is again to look at demand response applications. We work with every on cyber security of the grid, when you charge an electric car into the grid and the car is talking to the grid, they're having a conversation like you and I have a conversation. You want to make sure that conversation is protected and people can't find out where you park your car right now. Uh, we also have what's called the SMERC Industry Partners Program in which companies come and participate with us. We have 18 of those companies. I've just announced the UCLA Smart Grid Consortium and we're having a kickoff meeting for that on September 30th to involve, uh, September 20, uh, 25th to involve the industries to, to come and sponsor the kind of work that is going on in UCLA. We hold thought leadership forums, we invite utilities, uh, folks from CPUC, we had Mike Peavy from CPUC, who was a speaker recently, California Energy Commission, Mike Gravely and others have come and given many presentations over the years. Uh, in UCLA we have created what's called the Living Lab, in which we have electric cars, 
and we have we are adding solar into the UCLA grid to be able to do research on the interface between electric cars, solar, and the grid as an example. And why is that important? It's important because power flow used to be from the grid operator to you. Imagine in the future your electric car charging at night and selling power back to the grid in the afternoon, buying at two cents and selling at 35 cents. I can see some young, fresh minds here thinking, aha, that's the next dot-com boom and I can become a billionaire or I well, why not? <laughs> My research is trying to collect, connect the consumer, the smart consumer, and I argue the consumer is very, very smart. Uh, and the utility operator and the garage operator when it comes to work in the, in the EV space. Because at the end of the day, when you have an electric car, you have to plug it into the grid. And you cannot just, the grid is not an abstract concept, it's a parking garage somewhere. So what happened is, I had emailed Elizabeth, I said, is there a place to charge? And she said she'll find out, well, I do know. I drove around the parking lot. I could not find a charging station, FYI. Those are the kinds of infrastructure bottlenecks that we have to fix. And while my heart was pounding on Highway 405, can I make it, can I make it back? I, I, I used the eco button, and I think I can. It shows 70 miles, which is probably 30 miles, but UCL is in 30 miles. <laughs> we, built a, we built a mobile application. This app you have on your cell phone, you plug in your car, you authenticate yourself, it gives you a map of stations, you can start charging, you can do a pre-scheduled charging, you can stop charging, and you can pull this up from anywhere in the world. So you can literally plug in your car, you can fly to Cleveland, next evening fly back from Cleveland, and you can be controlling the charging in your car. You can look up charging stations on a map. Now, some of this technology is standard, okay, but we have actually gone ahead and implemented it, and this has been done by very creative students. We have something called the control center. In a control center, the status of all the cars in your grid shows up. Remember I said there's a consumer who needs that mobile app. The other is the control center operator, the garage owner, or the utility. They need to know what's going on. So they have an application as well. In the UCLA microgrid, we have solar and we have EVs. This shows you a picture of some electric vehicles. Plugged in, you can see on the bottom left a picture of the box that we have designed and built that is a smart box that can get signals from the utility operator. This shows you some pictures of a battery setup, shows you the mobile apps. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm just going to wrap up here real quick. Uh, this region is very important, even at the national level. Secretary of Stephen Chu was visiting the mayor, and I had the chance to meet with him last year. Uh, and he was here to inaugurate a, like, I think the 500 charging station. Pat Hoffman, Assistant Secretary of she visited UCLA last year. We had Mike Peavy, head of CPUC. Mayor Vera Gosa organized a EV workshop in UCLA. And he also spoke at this uh, another Siemens forum on Smart Grid a, lot, a couple of years ago. So with that, I'm going to stop. Uh, and just by saying that EVs are important, Los Angeles is really ground zero for the EV development. The grid operators are needed to make it successful. The policy folks are needed to make it successful. And I love this partnership slide at the end of the talk. Thank you very much.